Tonight, former Prime Minister Bob Hawke farewelled with tears and laughter at the Sydney Opera House. Long live friendship among nations and beyond all, long live love. Also ahead, the Australian man accused of the Christchurch attack pleads not guilty to 51 counts of murder. The US releases footage it says shows Iranian forces removing an unexploded mine from an oil tanker near the Sea of Oman. There's a new NBA champion and it's a team from Toronto, Canada. And the Toronto Raptors claim their first ever NBA title. Hello and welcome to ABC News. I'm Lara Himes. Bob Hawke has been farewelled at a state memorial service in Sydney. A who's who of past and present political, business and union leaders packed the concert hall of the Sydney Opera House to remember a man regarded as one of the most popular prime ministers in our history. The Australian man accused of killing 51 worshippers at two mosques in New Zealand has pleaded not guilty to all charges. 28-year-old Brenton Tarrant's trial is set down for May next year. Barbara Miller reports from Christchurch. Queensland's Premier has called on Adani to deliver on its promise for jobs now that it's been given final environmental approvals. Anastasia Palaszczuk made her first public comments on the approval of the Carmichael mine in Parliament this morning. Alison Horne reports. Less than 24 hours. Notorious cult leader Anne Hamilton Byrne has died at a Melbourne nursing home aged 98. Hamilton Byrne led the family doomsday cult northeast of Melbourne, made famous by images of children with bleach blonde hair who were abused and drugged with LSD. She was arrested in the US with the help of the FBI in 1993, but was only prosecuted for minor charges in Australia. Former police detective Lex DeMann describes her death as the end of a chapter. The United States has blamed Iran for attacks on two oil tankers in the Gulf of Oman. Tehran has denied involvement and the UN has called for investigation. It's the latest in a series of incidents destabilising the oil-rich region where Iran is battling for supremacy with US ally Saudi Arabia. Middle East correspondent Adam Harvey reports. The White House Press Secretary Sarah Huckabee Sanders is stepping down from her role at the end of the month. President Trump announced her departure on Twitter, describing her as a very special person. Host of Planet America John Barron says it's not clear if she's leaving of her own accord. It's hard to know with these departures. Uh, do, they, uh, do they jump? Are they pushed? In essence, Sarah Huckabee Sanders has... One person has been killed and several cars destroyed in a landslide in eastern China. Video shows the very moment that the landslide buried a road in the Fujian province, trapping a man in his car. Emergency crews managed to free the man after three hours, but he died on the way to hospital. The cause of the landslide is under investigation. Time for the weather now and here's Graham Creed. Former Prime Minister Bob Hawke has been farewelled at a state memorial service at the Sydney Opera House. A who's who of past and present political, business and union leaders packed the concert hall of the Sydney Opera House to remember a man regarded as one of the most popular Prime Ministers in our history. Our reporter Sarah Gerethy was there. Five current and former Prime Ministers were among the dignitaries. The Australian man accused of killing 51 worshippers at two mosques in New Zealand has pleaded not guilty to all charges. 28-year-old Brenton Tarrant's trial is set down for May next year. Chris Gallivan, who's a law professor and deputy pro-vice-chancellor of Massey University in New Zealand, says the attack was unprecedented on a global scale. Dr Roger Shanahan is a Middle East analyst at the Lowy Institute. He says that Iran is likely to be the culprit. Well, I think as... Uh, as... 
The ABC can reveal that the federal government considered a plan to recover student debts of people who had died. The documents obtained by the ABC under Freedom of Information show the move could have saved taxpayers $46 million over a decade. But the government eventually dumped the proposal amid concerns it would be too controversial. National education reporter Natasha Robinson has more on the story. This was a proposal that was put forward by... Well, time for the weather now. Here's Graeme Creed. We've got a real mix of conditions as we roll through the weekend. A couple of fronts. Thanks, Graeme. And that's the latest from ABC News. I'm Laura Himes. Stay with us now. The Drum is coming up next.